I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is now 6.01. If you would, please stand as Dr. Brown leads us in our invocation and Mr. Williams in our Pledges of Allegiance. Okay. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you uh, for the good gifts you give us as your children. Um, may we always remember to be grateful. We pray that uh, you'd grant each of us uh, a member of this board with wisdom, help us to look beyond our own interest and to the interest uh, of the district as a whole. Help us to understand that it, it, as we serve, that it's not the years of service we put in, but the service that we put in those years that really matter. Uh, we pray that uh, your protection on the men and women who serve in the armed forces we help us to ever be ever, always be grateful to them for the freedoms that that we have and help us to use those freedoms not to serve ourselves but to serve you in our community guide us in our decisions so that the decisions that we make will continue to improve uh, this district both academically and uh, financially, make us ever mindful of our obligations to the students, to the employees, to the administration, and to the taxpayer. These things we pray. Um, with these things we humbly pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. You may be seated. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Williams. <coughs> Next item on our agenda is 2A, Awards and Recognition, Special District Recognition. Dr. Stockton. All right. For our first recognition tonight, I'm going to ask Dr. Null, our Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Education, to come to the podium. Good evening, Dr. Stockton, President Sanders, members of the board. I'm pleased to be here tonight to help celebrate the accomplishments of four gifted and decorated student athletes and their great coaches. Back in February, the state wrestling meet was held in Garland. Athletes from across the state came together to battle to be named state champions. In the 5A division, there are 24 weight classes and therefore 24 students were crowned as state champions. I'm proud to tell you that four of those champions hail from Conroe ISD. And I believe that is the most state champions that we've had in our district's history. With us this evening are the coaches from the Woodlands High School, in Oak Ridge High School and Conroe High School to introduce the wrestlers. Up first, it is my pleasure to bring forward Coach Jeremy Horan from Conroe High School. Thank you all, and I want to thank the school board and the Conroe administration for taking the time to recognize the, the outstanding achievements of these individuals. Um, I'd also like to thank Dr. Knoll and Dr. Weatherly for their support over this past season and the last couple of years helping support these young ladies and young men as they were had were successful in their sports. Um, I was fortunate enough to coach two outstanding young ladies who have achieved quite a bit in their four years as they've competed for Conroe High. And I would like the first one we'll talk about had a was our was Conroe High's first ever state champion in wrestling only because her match was before the other young ladies. Um, but she had a great career. She um, <clears throat> She was a three-time district champion, also a regional, two-time regional champion, and was 40-0 this year, undefeated, and uh, was state runner-up in 2013, and in 2014, she was state champion. I do not want to forget also to mention that along with that, she has also been recognized by the Texas High School Coaches Association as being an all-academic all-state. And that wrestler that I'd like to first recognize is Nicola Newton.
And the second lady I'd like to recognize is Conroe High. She was the first ever four-time district champion for Conroe High. Uh, she's also been a three-time state qualifier, along with a regional champion. And also, like Nicola, I was fortunate enough to have another one that was a great student athlete as well. She was also recognized back at the Texas High School Coaches Association as an academic all-state selection. Um, and this year's two, uh, the 2014 state champion, Rebecca Winton. Also, I get the uh, opportunity to introduce uh, a fellow coach and um, a good friend of mine who is the head coach at Oak Ridge High School, Mike Morgan. I'd like to thank you for acknowledging and supporting of the wrestling this season. A little bit about Rachel Bates, who won the state for me this year. She was a four-time district champion, a four-time state entrant. She was also an academic all-state, recognized academic all-state. She ended her season this year 39-0, and, and uh, she had an outstanding career at Oak Ridge High School. Rachel Bates. <laughs> Unfortunately, she's had a little surgery, so you've got to kind of oh, okay. watch her. Oh. And I also get to introduce one of our fellow co-workers co and fellow coaches, Mike Harris from the Woodlands High School. I just want to say thank you very much uh, for having us. And I want to uh, thank you for acknowledging our sport. Um, I like to... Uh, to recognize Jacob Weingrad as our state champion for the Woodlands. Um, he's came a long way. His uh, record was 37-4. and four. Out of those four losses, he went in, during the season and beat those four guys that he lost to. So he had a hell of a tournament uh, for the state uh, tournament. Um, went all the way through and decided what he wanted to do, his goal he wanted to do, wanted to be a state champion, and he became a state champion. He can't be more proud for Jacob Weingrad. I also like to thank, thank you for uh, uh, Greg Colson for supporting us and for being at the tournaments and, and being there as, a, as our uh, backup for us. So Jacob Weingrad, thank you very much. Let's get a picture of all of you. Hey, um, put Mr. Kid in a choke hold or something. <laughs> 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 Shake hands. We'll do a left-handed shake. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm proud of you. Congratulations. I got a hurt. Congratulations. 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 Thank you for what you do. Thank you. Appreciate it, Coach. Good job. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> it's always exciting to have some state champions in the room. We won. All right. Item 2B is Patrons Influencing Education Award. Dr. Stock. Okay, we're going to recognize a very special person now, and to introduce this very special person is a very special person. Uh, Carrie Fitzpatrick, Principal of Rice, if you'll come up, please. Dr. Stockton, President Sanders, and members of the board, it's a pleasure to stand before you this evening and um, share my appreciation for someone who has become a very dear part of our B.B. Rice family. Mrs. Vera Washington has abundantly blessed our school. For the past two years, each and every day, she arrives at school no later than 8.30 and works until our students are dismissed at 3.05 in our library. She volunteers her um, services in our library so much that our staff considers her part of our staff and our students consider her the same. Having spent an entire sub day in our library, I can tell you firsthand how hard and diligently she office, offers her services each day. She impacts our total school community. From checking out books to students, shelving returned books, helping with barcoding books and technology, Mrs. Washington does it all. Our students consider her part of our staff and our staff wishes she was. She's kind, friendly, and has an amazing sense of humor. She apologizes and tries to offer explanations when she feels as though she's late and even reports her rare absences in advance. I often find myself consoling her and reminding her that she's volunteering her services and we appreciate them anytime she's willing to offer them. However, in her mind, she has a start time and an end time that she always holds true to. Because of Mrs. Washington's dedication, we are much more easily able to offer an open library to all staff and students while still allowing our librarian to teach lessons to each class in our school. I'm very appreciative of the numerous volunteer hours Mrs. Washington offers B.B. Rice Elementary, and I'm even more grateful for the relationship we've been able to acquire because of her gift of time. So at this time, I'd like to introduce you to Ms. Vera, Mrs. Vera Washington. <clears throat> I would just like to thank Mrs. Fitzpatrick, Miss um, Ainsley, Mrs. Parks, and everyone at B.B. Rice, and all of you school board for this award, and my family. Thank you all very much. Yes. So I want to give you this um, sock, but I want to say just for one second, I worked with your husband for many years at Moorhead Junior High, and anybody who can stay married to that man for a long time <laughs> is definitely deserving of a pie. And we're very thankful for community members like you dedicate so much of your time to our students, and so thank you very much. All right. And there's a pie for you. We oh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Although I'm diabetic, I'll take the picture. <laughs> thank you. We'll take a picture of here. Thank you so much for what you do. We really appreciate it. I'm running ahead, folks. Thank you for serving our district. Thank, Thank you for everybody. Thank you. Thanks again. <laughs> Item 2C is citizens' participation. Ms. Ferris, has anyone registered to address the board? All right. 
before we move to the consent agenda, I have something I received today that I'd like to read to the board. It says, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. It is with sadness, effective March 7th, 2014, that I tender my resignation from the Board of Trustees. We, my husband and I, have purchased a home in the woodlands outside of the Conroe ISD boundaries. It has been an honor and a pleasure to serve for almost 11 years. CISD has amazing employees, administration, staff, and teachers who give so much to make this district one of the finest in the state of Texas and the nation. I will truly miss them all. As a board with Dr. Stockton's leadership, I know you will continue to guide Conroe ISD to meet the needs of our students, parents, and community. I look forward to continuing to support CISD in any way that I can in the future. Thank you, C.J. Haynes. Next item on our agenda is consent agenda. I believe the board has had that. Uh, I'll second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor and all those opposed, and it passes. Thank you, sir. Item 4A, Travis Intermediate School Masonry Replacement. Dr. Stock. Uh, Mr. Foster, will you present that item, please? President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure tonight to bring forward for your approval a guaranteed maximum price proposal for the Travis Intermediate School Masonry Replacement. If you'll recall back in October at a uh, workshop, we brought forward to you that we had some masonry failures at Travis Elementary or Travis Intermediate. We have since then investigated those in depth. Uh, we surgically removed uh, various portions of, that, of the exterior skin of that building and interior portions of the exterior walls to verify exactly what the scope needs to be. At this point, we need to, uh, uh, it is the recommendation of our design team that we re remediate the original masonry uh, on the oldest portions of the building, which was the original structure from 1926 and the, uh, the first addition, which I believe was completed in 1931, 1932. Uh, my calculator says that those portions of that building have lasted almost 90 years. So they have uh, far exceeded what we would consider to be their usable, yeah. useful life. There's not a warranty left on them. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That's that's right. 90 yeah. years. Yeah. That's I did good. check. I could not find the contractor who built that one. It was written in stone. <laughs> well, in, in the course of our investigations, I mean, because you'll recall, we did have a, a piece of, uh, of the original limestone break loose of the building. It was, it was a low piece, uh, which is fortunate. But in the course of our investigations, we were able to shore up some of the, uh, the loose pieces around the building to make sure in the interim nothing did nothing did happen. So we were fortunate to make it this far and, and have no major incidents. Uh, the project removes the exterior masonry of that building completely on the original, uh, the, the two oldest parts of that building. That's the exterior veneer and the interior masonry <coughs> backup wall. It does uh, replace those bricks with bricks that aren't exact matches to the original brick, but they do match the latest uh, addition that'll be on that that the, was uh, as close as we could get at the time. Mm -hmm. The original limestone details, uh, the profiles of those details will be preserved. They're 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 selecting various pieces to make the molds for the new stone to be cast. So we're endeavoring to protect the the historical nature of the, the building, so it, we return it to its original uh, original likeness. Uh, we brought our design team, if you've got any more technical questions about that. Uh, I'd see some more bricks. We, uh, we proposed Brookstone Construction as the uh, construction manager for the job. They have experience with a very similar project at, at Hawk, uh, the alternative high school not far down the road. I'm asking for your approval tonight for a guaranteed maximum price of $3,079,712, funds to be provided from the 2008 bond referendum. And like I said, this project replaces the exterior brick and limestones on the original portions of the building that have, at this point, uh, become unstable past their usable life. So at this point, I ask for your approval. What percentage of the... Uh, yeah, can we get a motion? Is there a move? Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? So, in a second, now discussion. Okay. I don't know that was. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> we helped you out. What, per, what percentage of the building are we are we replacing or upgrading? Or? 
doing these modifications to? Uh, rather than discuss a percentage, because it's it, with the additions over the years, it's hard to calculate that exactly so you understand it. But what, what we're doing is replacing the exterior masonry for the original facade, which is from the latest addition, which is about four years old, all the way around the building before it touches the latest addition. How much of the original limestone will be remaining after this? this uh, we are not preserving any of okay. the original pieces. We're pre preserving their shapes. Part of, part of the the problem that we're seeing today is the nature of the limestone material itself. Uh, over the years, it's a porous material that soaks up water. Okay. Uh, and that, that soaking over 90 years has basically caused the uh, small little tiny explosions in the brick ties that hold it to the wall. And those, when those explosions, are, we're seeing that on the outside of the stone now. The, the material going back in place will be cast stone, which is a uh, more modern material that does not suck water through it like the original limestone does. So but this the, gets us up to kind of current year, or one of the current Well, it brings the, it brings the materials and the efficiency of, of the exterior skin up to today's energy standards. Uh, and also, uh, we're doing this preserving the, the features and the look of the building that's there currently. Okay. okay. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor and all those opposed, motion carries. <clears throat> I had a quick question. Um, yeah, as a student of Travis Junior High, is any of the exterior portion being preserved? I'm not suggesting we spend any more money, but I'm just thinking of the Montgomery County Heritage Society, or you know, that has the. Is there any discussion or yeah. any possibility of that? We, we haven't discussed any of it, but I, I'd be willing to bet there is a strong possibility. I mean, I I don't think any one person is going to want an entire building's worth of bricks because that's right. a bunch of them. Uh, but the nature of the project is going to call for somewhat surgical demolition. So instead of swinging a wrecking ball into it, it will be taken down piece by piece. Right. So the opportunity to preserve some of those original entities for keepsakes or, or other, or maybe a trophy case display type thing should be available. So y'all will at least make inquiries as to if anybody's interested? That is true. Okay, great. Good question. To the point. All right. <clears throat> Item 4B, bond referendum update. All right. Uh, Foster, if you'll present this item also. Again, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure to give you the update on the projects currently underway that are funded with the 2008 bond referendum funds. Starting with Charlie L. Patterson Elementary School. The, this school is currently on schedule. Uh, we are scheduled to take possession of the building at the end of this month. As you can see here, the exterior of this building is coming along nicely and weather permitting, we should start seeing the landscaping going in uh, in the very near future. Uh, the interior of this building is somewhat different. I'm gonna show you the difference <coughs> between this one and uh, Stewart next door, or not next door, but on the other end of the district. Uh, you see the ceiling, the ceramic tile, things of that nature are, are installed. What you won't see are the, the wood flooring on the stage and the carpet. Uh, last month I reported to you the utility for the gas had been delayed that delay has been resolved, but the state boiler inspection is still keeping us from firing up the boiler to install the carpet. The carpet is on site stacked in the classrooms, it's just not on the floor. Uh, so it's just a matter of uh, a handful of days to put the carpet down. At Jeannie Stewart Elementary School, uh, this one is the same level of completion percentage wise. The interior of the building is more complete than Patterson. The exterior of the building is where the developer held us up a little bit. So those things are, um, it's not quite as clean as, as we would uh, normally see at this stage of completion. But like Patterson, Stewart is uh, uh, very near complete. We, the building is on schedule. We will take possession of the building at the end of this month. The exterior, where the developer has changed our driveway configurations, um, all that concrete is going in as we speak. Uh, so over the next couple of weeks, uh, we'll be able to drive on it. And then uh, sometime middle April, the landscape things of that nature will be uh, near, nearing completion. At Knox Junior High, you will see the same picture you've seen for the last couple of months. Uh, this project is proceeding as planned. Uh, the, we had a, a walkthrough with our maintenance staff and the uh, contractor on Monday this week, so yesterday, to cover up the third phase of the area. Uh, the turnover of that phase happens over this coming weekend, and then phase four begins next week in earnest. So far, we've seen improvements uh, through the building going as planned. The new light fixtures, the new air conditioning systems, 
are, are performing like they're supposed to. As we near the summer is when we really start getting into in some, some more, more into work. The, as, as you will recall, this, uh, this project also works on McCullough. It also touches uh, five other campuses. Some of that work was done over spring break. Uh, a lot of those things uh, happened as they were scheduled to. Chiller replacements at Oak Ridge High School, chiller replacements at Cannon Creek High School, and the, uh, the work in the libraries for Ford and Haley uh, has started. It's not 100% complete yet, but the work is by nature above the ceiling, above everybody's head, so uh, nobody really knows it went on over spring break. So at this point, Knox Junior High is on schedule proceeding exactly as planned. And that is our 2008 bond update. All right. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Great job. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 5A, Business and Finance, Employee Group Health Plan and Third Party Administrator, Dr. Stock. Uh, Mr. Cox, will you come present that item, please? President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, uh, I recommend the Board of Trustees award CSP number 34007, Employee Group Health Plan and, and Third Party Administrator to Aetna to provide health plan design, the medical network, and the plan administration for the CISD self-funded health insurance program. <clears throat> the competitive SIL proposal document was prepared by uh, Mr. Brown of T. Ross Brown & Associates. Uh, five proposals were received uh, by CISD on Friday, January 31st, 2014. A committee of eight employees, Mrs. Haynes, former board member, uh, and Mr. Brown <coughs> met to evaluate the five proposals on February 12th, 2014. Three finalists, Aetna Memorial Health Solutions, and United Healthcare were selected to make their best and final proposal to the full benefits committee on Wednesday, March 5th, 2014. <clears throat> Each vendor submitted their proposal, which included their plan design, expected costs, premium guidance, and their third party administrator capabilities. Upon completion of the finalist presentations, Aetna was recommended by a 23 to one vote of the benefits committee. I'm happy to have with me tonight uh, our consultant, Terry Brown, and also Judy Haley, our, our account representative from Aetna. Uh, they're certainly available to answer any questions, uh, but I recommend at, at this time that you approve uh, this proposal. You said 23 to 1, huh? 23 to 1. It sounds like one of those doctor recommended 9 out of 10. Nine out of 10. <laughs> that's right. 9 out of 10. That other one, yeah. that's <laughs> It was secret ballot, though. Okay. So, so, all right. Is there a motion to approve? So Almost. moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All right. Discussion? Mr. Cox, as I understand the premiums that the CISD employees will pay, they're going down for individuals and couples and going up slightly for families. Is that That's correct? That's exactly right. We, we went into this. As you know, we've struggled uh, greatly with our health plan uh, in recent years. And we really, our objective was to overhaul the health plan with a more cost-effective approach, and we're going to what's called an accountable care organization, uh, really uh, through uh, Memorial Hermann system, but, but operated by Aetna. Uh, and we, we went into that with objectives of being able to come up with a new plan that uh, would be a different design but would enable us to provide insurance to our employees at, at no more than they were paying uh, and possibly less than they were paying under the previous plan. Uh, we're delighted with the outcome, and, and you're absolutely right. Uh, we have employee-only employee, employee costs went down, employee and children costs went down, employee and spouse costs went down rather significantly. significantly. Right. Uh, and and the only one that went up slightly was family, which uh, uh, was driven by the recommended guidelines that we received from the... But we still have our clinics, so there is some affordable clinic. options. Mm -hmm. Even though the premium went up slightly, there's still mm -hmm. those affordable mm -hmm. options to go to the clinic versus go to the doctor and the difference exactly. in the copay. Now, now, I will add that the district is upping their contribution per employee $20 a month. Uh, okay. Uh, which is equivalent to as well. Yeah, and uh, we are upping, and 
that's in the proposal as well. So, were there so, any major changes in coverage from year over year? I mean, we're, are we comparing apples to apples? I guess is what I'm getting. Well, you you have uh, you'll be able to get the same health care. There is some changes in uh, in the design in that the deductible has gone up uh, somewhat. Uh, the for instance, uh, the deductible went up. Uh, uh, under the basic plan, the deductible was uh, 625 for an individual and 1250 for a family. That's now gone up to 1,000 and 2,000 uh, uh, under the ACO uh, option. Uh, so there has been some adjustments, uh, but uh, that was part of the. But really, these are very still. Very, it's very competitive to the market that's out there. I mean, this is a good plan. And, and we're really, we're, we're pleased with what we've been able to achieve. Okay. Any other discussion or comment? Actually, uh, yes. I would just like to say thanks for all your diligence and working to get the best deal you can for the employees. As an employee in a district that's stuck with TRS Active Care, uh, I can certainly empathize with the struggle that it must have been for you guys to reach a, the best deal. i tell you what, we, we've, we heard that a lot in talking to other districts that, uh, that are in TRS now and wish they could get out. Yeah. Uh, uh, although the interesting thing with TRS, we you know just in the last couple of months, it's been learned that uh, Aetna is taking over administration of TRS now. So Aetna is going to have about 80 or 90 percent of the of the school district employees in the state now. Yeah, 90 percent of the districts yeah. are part of TRS Active yeah. Care, so yeah. it's pretty substantial. Yeah. yeah. And we're still cheaper than TRS. Uh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. We're, we're more cheaper than they are now. Yeah. We're substantially le yes. less than they are now. So I recommend that you approve it. Other Somebody? comments or questions? If not, all those in favor and all those opposed, motion carries. Mr. Thank Cox, you, Mr. I would Mark. like to thank you for your uh, <coughs> diligence and leadership in this year-long process. We really started a year ago. It's been a big, big project. We appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate all the work, man. All right. The next item on our agenda is executive session. Oh. Financial reports. No, I'm sorry. I missed financial reports. Thank you. Go ahead. I'd already checked that off. I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel so good about our finances. I just, uh, that's easy. Mr. Rice, financial reports. I apologize. You guys want to this meeting has a weird energy about it, doesn't it? Mr. Rice, if it's all the same with the board, we'll give you a pass tonight. Well, he went to the trouble of putting together a presentation. Well, go ahead. Present, man. Present. I like the dollar signs waving at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get it. President, Stockton, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, I'm here to present the financial statements uh, for the district for the month of February. Uh, these statements will include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and our self-funded insurance. Uh, the first statement we see is our balance sheet for the month. Balance sheet shows our assets, liabilities, and fund balances. Uh, we always like to look at our cash and short-term investments. As you can see, it shows our cash on hands, bank deposits, external pool funds, and our Capital One now account. Our next statement is the income statement for the same funds. It shows our revenues, expenditures, and fund balances. At the local level, our largest uh, source of funding, we can see for each one of the funds uh, where our revenues come from. In the uh, general fund and debt service, the largest is our property taxes. In uh, child nutrition is from food sales, and then self-funded is from our premium contributions, both from the district and employees. Our general fund balance projection, we're projecting an increase in our fund balance of about $5 million for our general fund. Debt service, a decrease of about $4.1 million. Uh, child nutrition showing a decrease of about $1.6 million, and this is a change uh, from the previous months, and uh, as y'all recall, we had our audit uh, with the uh, Department of Agriculture, and uh, one of the requirements with fund balance in, in our in our uh, child nutrition fund is they cannot have more than three months fund balance. So they have put together a plan to spend down their fund balance buying infrastructure, products, and things, and equipment for their for their facilities. So that's reflective of that plan. Uh, Self-funded insurance, uh, you know, good report here for the first six months. Uh, you know, we're to the positive. Um, for the uh, revenues, we've had $16.5 million worth of revenue so far in the plan. 
uh, expenditures of 16.1 million. So we're to the positive about $400,000 so far this year, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, our, our participation uh, in our wellness centers at Oak Ridge, we've had 3,100 visit that facility for an average of about 517 a month. At the uh, Conroe facility, 476 for an average of 79. Our bond transition plan, our $109 million bond tra transition plan, uh, we've currently expended and encumbered $23.5 million, an estimate, estimate to complete of $80.4 million, projected forecast of $104 million, leaving us with a contingency of right about $5 million. Our investments for the month of February, at the end of January, we ended at $375 million the end of February, 384 million. Weighted average maturity of the pools in a Capital One, 66 days. Yield the maturity of our portfolio, 0.1549. Our benchmark, the 90-day T-bill is 0.04. Very good. And line money. <laughs> I do have one quick question. Yes, sir. Back on that last slide. Uh, prior to us doing the Capital One, we were 10, 11 basis points, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, I mean, 15 is, is still not great, but it's 50% greater than it was almost. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. And, and rates have generally come down since. That's right. Yeah, That's a, exactly right. Right. So, down, holding so it 15 basis points is not bad. Not bad. That's right. Considering the market. All right. Thank you very much. I, I wanted to add one other update. Uh, this is kind of on, on both the health plan and on his. You saw the visits to the Conroe uh, Clinic. Okay. Uh, you're going to see that number start to go up because effective March 3rd, we entered into a new agreement with HCA in which our employees have access to their health clinic, their their employee health clinic, 40 hours a week now, whereas we were only offering 16 hours a week mm -hmm. uh, in Conroe. So now we're going to have 40 hours in Conroe and 40 hours in South County. So awesome. available. That's great. Yeah. Very good. Thank you very much. That's right. Thank, Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Now, item six, executive session. Sorry, I jumped the gun. A closed session of the board will now be held on matters contained in the notice for this meeting as authorized by section 551.071 and 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be either at this public meeting upon the re reconvening of this public meeting or at a subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof, as the board shall determine. A closed session of the board will now be held. The time is 6.30, 6.40 p.m.